two of my favorite things on earth are dry aged beef and prime rib. When you combine the two, that's what I want to eat. We're here at Moo Ram in Long Island City. A year ago, we had some extremely long age Wagyu. <laughs> that's pretty awesome, nice. man. <laughs> well, we're going to see if we can replicate that success using prime rib. What you are doing is basically doing a classic prime rib dinner in a ramen joint in Long Island City. I just want to experiment with me while I can and the different processes and uh, try to understand more about how to best cook some of these meats. Uh, and I've done a lot of research on how to make prime rib uh, and, and I'm hoping this will hopefully be one of the best prime ribs around. This could revolutionize prime rib as we know it. Right? Well, I don't know, really it's, it's, it's very expensive to do it this way, but who knows, maybe. Generally speaking, a good um, prime rib or rib roast, roast most people uh, make dry age it for like 45 days. I've done a few times where 90 days, 110 days, and it still doesn't, that flavor doesn't get into the center so much. Right. Uh, I've noticed that the flavor components aren't quite there. So I thought, you know, if we try over 200 days, double it, um, it might reach, finally get to the center. We are actually confining it in dry aged fat. This was literally about 100 pounds of fat rendered down. and then we rendered it and this is how much we got from that 100 pounds. We have about 20 quarts of dry aged fat. And, um, this dry aged fat is about uh, 90 days, between 45 days and 90 days. So it's a combined, so an average is probably about 60 days. Confing is a classic French technique traditionally used for preserving meats like duck and goose but it's a great way of slowly cooking something so that you can really get it to a perfect temperature and not overcook it. Traditionally, confit uses goose or duck fat, but of course we're doing the ultimate prime rib, so we have to use beef fat. And what the chef is using is dry aged fat rendered down to make a really pure tallow. 57 hours later, we are at 129.8. No, really, how long did it actually go in here for? Uh, it's been in there since 8 o'clock. Right now it is uh, 4 o'clock. Well, a lot longer than you actually expected, yeah. right? Much longer. Way longer. Yeah. Almost double the time. And here is the moment of truth. It ended up taking a lot longer than anticipated to bring it to the 129 degree mid-rare temperature the chef was looking for. Frankly, that's overcooked for my taste, and it also meant that I had to wait longer to eat this wonderful piece of meat. This is at the very end. It's still very, very red. It's just seeping like crazy. Well, we've let it rest now for about a half an hour. It's actually quite cool to the touch on the outside. So we're gonna put it in the oven now to do the reverse here. And what are you going in, like 10 minutes? No, about six minutes. Six minutes at 500 degrees or as hot as the as oven gets? As hot as the oven gets, our oven gets roughly about 600 degrees. Okay. okay? So the reverse sear is exactly as it sounds. Rather than searing the meat first and then bringing it to temperature in the oven, you're doing the opposite. You're bringing it to temperature first and then searing it at the end by just cranking up the heat in the oven. That, my friends, is called a reverse sear. Where you see the bones start pushing out that moisture, you get that frothy white. That's a beautiful sear, chef. Look at the outside on that. Look at that. Freaking. The absolute edge to edge yes. pink. Notice on this entire thing is perfectly edge to edge. Well done. And then just brown under. There's absolutely no gray. And you can whatsoever. also see that a lot of what that is is actually the dry age. You yes. can actually see, especially from this end, it yes. was pretty funky. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank yeah. you Chef. This is the moment that this 18 hour cooking process has led up to. Um, although I have a feeling this could be like one of those moments that my whole life has been leading up to. Every dry age room you've walked into, if you've been to one, or if you've been, if you watch the meat show, like when you walk into a dry age room, you get hit with the flavor of hanging beef, and that's what this smells like. It actually tastes much more like a steak than a piece of prime rib. Now, Prime rib is generally slow roasted. It has gentle, soft roasted flavors. This does not have those. This is like, 
boom, like dry age, and see if that was an aberration, but I don't think it was. This is just one of the best pieces of meat I've ever had, period. I almost think that this is too much for prime rib. I think it's... I think, I think it was a really great experiment. I think that um, to see how to cook it, the technique of it is perfect, but the flavor itself, I think what happens is the dry aged fat permeated inside of it too much. And for me, even for me, like I personally don't think I could serve this. Because but you wouldn't be able to serve this as prime rib, but you could use this. No, I wouldn't even use this because I think food's supposed to be craveable. And I don't think this is craveable. Another great episode. Thank you so much. It's always great to have you on Thank the show. You. What do you have for us next time? I guess we'll have to find out for next time. All right, well, I'm looking forward to whatever that's gonna be because the last two have been a bit gonzo, frankly. So, from Chef Josh Smookler, this is The Meat Show. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. This Brooklyn sandwich is very unique to this area. You don't find sandwiches like this other places. There's a French dip, but this isn't really a French dip. It's, it's different.